lover's choice. I never know that it would. Hold on. I never know that it would be so nice, Love Sponge. What's going on, chat? Listen to what I'm saying to you. Brandon Buckingham is out here again, y'all. He in Seattle on third and pipe. Drug epidemic. I didn't even know they had a little drug epidemic in Seattle. But it's looking like Kensington 2.0. Xylazine and horse strength. I don't know, guys. Let's find out. You know what I'm saying? And also, uh, I'm gonna drop a little video on Rings of Power. I got some, I got some grievances I gotta get out, y'all. It's prejudice in Middle Earth, y'all. It's prejudice in Middle Earth, dog. Yeah, but let's get into it, man. No, no, seriously, let's get out let's of here. Go. Third and Pike. It's a place where you can get drugs. It's a place where you die. The epicenter of Seattle, Washington's drug epidemic. The intersection has become infamous for the hundreds of addicts that gather here to buy and use hundreds illegal of drugs. Addicts, guys. The storefronts, once vibrant, now stand as hollow Jesus shells, Christ. overshadowed by the rampant addiction and despair. But it wasn't mm. always this way. Going back to the 1920s, it was a popular streetcar stop for those that wanted to enjoy the more luxurious side of life, as the intersection featured an impressive array of upscale shopping. The first Starbucks was even founded two blocks from here in 1971, and the 1979 opening of the McDonald's was a proudly celebrated event. Unfortunately, the crack epidemic of the 1980s crack. hit the area hard. And crack the McDonald's and McDonald's in the same sense is kind of hangout spot. Honestly, guys, it's kind of fitting. In recent years, it has exploded in popularity with the local residents, resulting in more what overdoses the heck? and violence than because mcdonald's ever, as well is kind of like crack y'all so come with me as we travel out to seattle it's like Washington scientific crack firsthand they make that stuff in a lab bro i steal Turtle hundreds flesh. of dollars worth of groceries it's supposed to be one of the richest states around the country and we're dealing with this how would you describe the difficulty of kicking opioid addiction it's impossible they don't want you to kick the share. opioid addiction or yeah. even solve the crisis they want you to be opioided up heroin like Heron. Behind me is Third and Pike, and we're going to try to speak to some of the people that live here and find out firsthand what life is like. It broke into the raw. Mm -hmm. No way, dude. Bro is right, everywhere, y'all. just missed it. Some guy ran up here and smashed And we got the same name, too. I got, uh, we might have to do a little collaboration. Ran out. As you can see we'll right be here, honest. it's closed. And yeah, this guy tried to bring this big box out here. There's a bunch of merchandise on the ground. We got some Calvin Kleins. Got some merch. Saw some okay, good no, seriously, let's get out of here. Yes, sir. <laughs> That's crazy. Oh, super poor timing on my part, picking up the stolen object right as the uh, cop walks out. So who am I here with? Liam. What is life like out here on Third and Pike? Uh, crazy as hell. Treacherous, it seems like. Bullshit, mayhem. A bunch of people walking around like zombies, all fucked up on fentanyl. How would you describe Third and Pike to someone who's never heard about it? It's a place where you can get drugs. Yo, is it me or is there always someone in a wheelchair in these areas? It's like always. It's probably like three of them. And shit like that. I don't even Every out time. Here. On and off for about like the last, I want to say like eight years. And the crazy no, part is, I, I believe they can walk. Uh, drink the, oh, never uh, mind. Horse tranquilizer that uh, you know what I'm saying we'll eats through this tissue. So it's suffering from that horse right train. Now. That's the same yeah. stuff that's in Kensington. Right, the xylazine. Here. I'll show you. Xylazine and horse trank. Oh, oh God! Gosh. Don't show that. Oh. How long has it been like that? Uh, Stay well, away from drugs, kids. Been like that for about like on and off for like the last two years. If this doesn't make you want to stay away from drugs, I really don't understand y'all people. Really and truly. No. Jesus. I bought that stuff by mistake off of somebody that I I didn't know or trust. I scratched my leg one time and that's all it took. Next day, I had a a a lesion like wound. Nobody wants to be in this fucking hell as you can hear. This place fucking sucks, Bro did the man. drugs and the uh, drugs mess yeah, your body up so here. much. Not if you get here, like bro, one you know, scratch, you just start deteriorating. <laughs> deteriorating. <laughs> material. Well, I don't know what was happening to him. <laughs> it's crap. It's, um, it's exactly what you see. It's garbage. It's dope. It's hoes. It's people who don't care about themselves, <laughs> much less anybody else. It's, um, computers. <laughs> it's, it's shit like that. Um, people out here trying to sell. Just to live. We're she getting seems nice. Do you feel like there's some misconceptions about the homeless population? Absolutely. But then again, look what? at this place. These people act like their two year old children don't know how to pick up after themselves. It's like disgustingly filthy and dirty. If I were to fly in from any other state and see this is a downtown, I'd be fucking repulsed. 
you know, nowhere else. Well, is guys, don't let's not tell her trash. about Kensington. Every person you see out here right now is an adult. Adults should be able to clean up after themselves. Just a few and years she's ago, not, came she's here, not, you came here and see orange she's decent too, y'all. all around the street, right? A couple years ago, it was heroin. You might have to go to Third and Pike, y'all. Not for the xylazine, not for the horse drink. Everywhere, like everywhere you go, for the bitties. Playgrounds, everything. There'll be needles everywhere, all over the city. Far and few between people who still shoot up out here, but I mean, you'll see it occasionally. But if you if you call a number, they'll come and pull up on you and give you needles, give you whatever you need. What's his drug of choice? Needle delivery service? Yeah, they do. It's, it's a, like a needle exchange, harm reduction, and then they have harm reduction places where you can go and give your needles. You exchange them one for one. Bro is on needles, speed mode. All of a sudden, even if you don't Meth, have needles, they'll Adderall give you or one of, them. It's crazy. one of those. How does it make you feel when you see people maybe. like uh, this gentleman who is on the ground just But he ain't touching his nose and all that stuff. He might just be uh, uncomfortable. I mean, I don't. I don't like to he see might it, just but I, mean, I guess that being out here is a part of life, you know? You can lead a horse to water, but you can't make them drink. Like, you can't get these people sober if they don't want to get sober themselves, you know? One of them derby well, announcers or like one of them auctioneers. Something to be done. Hi, yeah, 100%. Yeah. If you don't want to get sober for yourself, Hang on. you're probably not going to get sober. Like, you can get a dose of fentanyl for a buck. Maybe know? his dad was one of them. super crazy. How cheap Maybe his dad was one of them. I wouldn't say cheap, but it was like $10 for a point or like, like 60 to 80 a gram. A fentanyl pill is a lot stronger than like a point of heroin, so... The, when the fentanyl pills came out, they took over. How bad is the fentanyl addiction? You see a lot of these people, like, they'll be going crazy. He's clutching that dog, though, y'all. Like, just begging people to get them high. And, you know, like, I used <laughs> to be an opiate addict, and, like, the opiate withdrawals are horrible. For someone who doesn't know what it's like, how is the experience of going through a fentanyl withdrawal? Um, it's like the flu times, like, five. It's horrible. It's like the worst flu you've ever had in your life. Or maybe he's a recovering so addict. People don't want to go through withdrawal, so they keep doing it, you know? Seattle used to be so much more than this. And now it's, it's this, and it's so sad. What do you think the cause of Seattle getting so much worse is? An attitude of acceptance, you understand? Um, the laws are changing, and they're, they're being more, they're, they're, way, they're easier on people. And I know like that nobody wants to hear me say that, but and you have people shooting up and smoking and all that on the street and shit. I've done it, I do it, you understand? So I'm not going to, and I can't knock it. But I do because I know better. And if I'm going to do that, I should be in the house doing it. I just don't have a house anymore, so where am I going to do it at? Seattle's definitely not, not doing the what they're supposed to. There's a lot of homelessness, and, like, they're they're really not doing shit about it. Like, as you can see, like, the block is fucking crazy out here right now, and the cops really aren't doing much. They really can't do much. <laughs> Seattle uh, is, like, down a ton I was just going right to say, now, what are the so, cops I mean, supposed not, to do? They're not doing even a Invite, what they should. like, ten really. homeless of, people into their homes? Boosting, and they grab shit from stores. And maybe start, like, a program where the cops could, like, <laughs> open their homes on their minimum wage. And bind up straight on the block. Where do all these people sleep at night? A lot of them just walk around here all night long, and that's all they be doing is just walking around, and, like, they don't really have a place to go. And then the other people, they either have tents or, like, they have somewhere to go, a friend's house, a tent, tiny home, whatever, you know? I think Seattle's done a great job. They got bombarded with a lot of people. Um, the housing part is kind of iffy to me. You know, I've realized that there's a lot of housing available, but they're not being utilized for some reason. And there's a lot of buildings that are going up that are being torn down and rebuilt. There's enough units for whoever's left out here anyway, for them to have at least two units to themselves. For those who don't know, Seattle offers its homeless population housing programs such as Urban League and DESE, a program that aims to end homelessness and assist by placing people in emergency housing sites. You were saying that you've been homeless before, right? Yeah, I've been homeless for like a couple years, had a stint of homelessness. And how difficult is it to get housing here in Seattle? If you don't have any resources, it's really difficult to get housing. Especially a lot of people out here, like, they get their shit stolen, they lose their ID, all that kind of stuff. The city and Kamala people, Harris like, supports all of this. house people for an extended amount of time, but that's, like, difficult. It takes years to get into. Either, A, they just tell you to call back later, or they really mm -hmm. don't help you at all. I mean, like, it's super difficult. It took me a couple of years to get to get off the streets. I mean, a lot of these people have been out here for six, seven, eight years and still can't get housing. And then, like, they have a bunch of shelters, and the shelters are always either full or, like, they have bed bugs and, like, like lice and all sorts of crazy shit that you don't want to get. I mean, rapists. Lots of I heard. They give out. I already got um, sexual predators in those shelters. And shit and all that stuff and oh, yo, that's race, the lady yeah. in the in well, the other seat. There she is. So they give you supplies. She was just in the back. That you can safely use, but that creates a drug culture. So if you're trying to get Clean, she reminds like, me of the little bird from Surf Up. Like, the one that walks fast as hell. Don't. And you have those. You don't respect anything anybody else is trying to do. So. I'm sorry about your background, but that bitch is a mess. So. This is ridiculous. There's many times I've cleaned up, you know, just the whole corner. Just because I'm sick of looking at it and being in it, you know? Because the people you see out here, you know what I mean? Everyone's just like hunched over and it's like fucking walking through Monsters Inc. <laughs> you know? It's crazy. What are the people like out here? Assholes. <laughs> and 
scandalous. Be very careful of the things you hold in your possessions, you know, because they'll be gone in three seconds if you don't watch them closely. What originally brought you down to Third Pike? I don't know. People like me, kind of, you know, wanders, you know, nomads. Well, you've been here. I wonder what's her drug of choice. Died, so. She died in October 11th, 2021, so I've been out here since she died. That's about it. Uh, I'm sorry to hear that. No, it's okay. Whoa, what, what happened? We shot Orbeez at us. Someone just drove by and shot us with Orbeez. Yeah, see, they do cynical shit like that. Yesterday, I got threatened to be shot in the eyeball and in the face. How did you initially what? Uh, wind with up? With Orbeez or a real I gun? I ended up losing my job. I was a caregiver. It's my career. I got my CNA. What's some of the stuff you have to go through living out here? Uh, a lot of abuse. I didn't have it hard compared to a lot of other people that have been abused in many awful ways by their parents, by their family members. Hey, um, yeah. yeah. What are you doing? What the hell? She's interviewing, bro. She's interviewing. She... If I can get into a what are you car doing? and run, I would run away. Is there a lot of violence out here? Oh, yeah. yeah but that guy that seems like a vibe. <laughs> he seems like yeah, a vibe, yeah. It's a very violent culture. When people are out here stealing <laughs> each other, it can become a violent situation. It's it's constant, rampant. People get stabbed. People get shot all the time. See, I'm trying to tell the and world about the crisis, street, the drug epidemic that's going on here, bro. Give violence. me a second. In 2015, a large-scale drug bust swept through the area and 95 people were arrested, but it did little to quell the drug addiction that plagued the streets. On January 22nd, 2020, eight people were shot outside the Yo, McDonald's. Yo, I have some phlegm on my chest, y'all. Would you say this is one of and the most dangerous areas away. in Seattle? Uh, yeah, that and I'd say Chinatown, like about like 12th and Jackson, probably like one of the most dangerous areas. Next, we make our way to 12th Avenue and South Jackson Street. And Ten Brandon goes straight Street, there. Roughly a half mile away. So just a short drive away from a real Pike soldier is 12th and Jackson, right? And you said that uh, what goes on out here? Um, this is like the notorious uh, like selling area for stolen merchandise, like fencing. How much of a discount can you get items if you purchase them out here? I mean, it, it depends on what you're getting, but like really, really cheap, like for instance, like clothing. You can get like nice clothing that's like probably 50 bucks in the store for like five bucks out here. A lot of these people just go into a store and just grab stuff and leave. Yeah, they do uh, what's called guerrilla boosting, which is where you go into a store, you just openly grab merchandise and leave. Boosting or retail theft has caused several That's what the, that's, that's, that's called. Area, affected yeah, by I've seen so many videos it's of people just running up in there like just dress for less. grab a As handful right, of just, Louis V and Gucci and just dip out of there. And, uh, Sometimes they get caught, y'all. Like the unfit ones, the one that's like a little bit obese. Yeah, they're returning like I was this stuff. in the car, smash and grab robberies are common out here. Yeah, yeah. So a lot sometimes of they trip and go down, down and it's you crazy. The McDonald's up there. Yeah, you can't go inside the McDonald's. The Macy's closed down. I might, I might bring y'all one of those videos. A, bunch of a lot of the time, if they don't have private security, they won't do anything and they won't stop you. The most of the stores don't want confrontation. They don't want that bullshit. So you fuck the rich people that are mad that I wear more expensive shit than they do. If I get it cheaper than they do. Shit start getting wild, man. It start, you know, that Fetty start hitting, man. These streets start getting a little more wicked, man. And you know, Fetty's like turning to. I believe him. Cold at night time. Um, there's not a lot of bathrooms used as a girl which is gross but you be crazy out here like real people like be smoking all day long like it's like this until like cops come people start moving around like kettle we're getting money we're getting paid we're getting laid every day i don't have to put up with all the rules of society and all their bullshit we're getting money taxes, getting paid so and laid so every day the money what a lifestyle guys i want you until the um the cops come and tell us i gotta put is that his money. real hair all the kids are disappearing uh, only people that can make him disappear without Yo, if that's his real hair, he missed out. Looking like, dr he did something bad paper. with the drugs. Tell a little bit about life out here? Amazing. The atmosphere is awesome. I moved out that's here. That's his real hair? Legal and things like that. I want to be homeless. Bro could you know? do something out here with yeah. that. Like, I like it. What are some of the benefits of being homeless from your perspective? I don't have to answer to nobody. So wake up whenever, go to bed whenever. How long have yeah. you been homeless for? I've been homeless for going on six years. What did you do before you were homeless? I worked at a shipyard for 14 years on the East Coast. Tell me a little bit about life out here. You go, worked gonna, for 14 years on the East Coast and then just retired into homelessness. By choice. And you're going to see the real underbelly of the world. Crazy. That shot fucking the other day. Oh, yo, I thought his it's thumb was something else. I was about to say, how? how? Did you get shot? Oh, you showing this on YouTube? One time it went in and it went out, and just being wrong place, wrong time. How long ago was that? It was like two days. That ago. made my heart jump a little bit, y'all. 
Today's your birthday? Yes, I, I almost not made it to my own birthday. Man. Just yeah. right Happy birthday. Yeah, thank, thank you very much. I feel like the Seattle government is uh, doing a good job of helping homeless people find housing. Outreach workers who don't do very much outreach for me, being I'm homeless, if I miss an appointment or something, they get upset with Her me. Her eyes or are they nice. don't do their fair share thing of reaching out. Like, right now I'm homeless. It's the I don't drugs I don't like. I phone because I fall asleep outside and they get stolen. Can't catch up with her, she can't catch up with me, and um, she's in court a lot, so. <laughs> Homelessness has been an ongoing historical issue in Seattle. The problem Damn. is documented as far back as 18. I don't know, guys, in is this worse than Kensington? allocated $80 million <clears throat> for the division of homeless I've never been to Seattle. However, the cost of medical, but I, I've police, been into Kensington, it's just crazy. Has cost much more than this across the region. For the government, you know, you guys know it. The government don't care about nobody. What do you think could be done to clean up an area like Third and Pike that has been the way it is on and off for over 40 years? They gave us home housing, and it really, I mean, it really didn't do much. You're still out there. So you gave everybody out there housing? Pretty much. I mean, the people that really wanted it. I mean, you want me to be honest about it? Yeah. The motherfuckers that didn't get housing didn't want housing. You were supposed to, they chose to be in one spot. You were in one spot. Come on, man. So you feel like someone that's homeless right now in downtown Seattle has the option yeah. to be yeah. Yeah. housed? Yeah. See, here's the thing. Even if you give them housing, though, they'll just become homeless again. That's probably surprising. Because they're addicted to drugs. Well, it's the truth. And I really put the time in to really, like, And it's, like, growing in their lives. And that's how I got my housing. So life, even if you give them the house, they won't maintain it. They'll just be a crack house in the next two months. You know, I. I want to. I want to. I want to quit doing. Drugs. And that's no you disrespect to them. You just have to know the situation. You know what I mean? It's too much temptation. Everybody there does drugs. Everybody there is crazy. Everybody is just a just a, a piece of uh, outside world in a, in an apartment building, pretty much. It's like a chaos environment. Mm -hmm. How long have you been out here? I've been on the street for ten years. I just got an apartment last last hour. You get sub. I've been indoors for about a year. Almost a year. You have to pay. Oh, to he part. has a house. Nice. Uh, Thirty percent of income. Do you like that whole situation, or is there something that you think Seattle could be doing differently? No, he chooses doing, to doing hang out right there, guys. The housing, you know, who just takes he doesn't forever. have to. If you're a single white male, you're going. It's going to take years before you even get into a place. Well, you're going to be last on the list. Yeah. No, the tiny, the tiny house would be cool. Like, you go up and like, if you didn't have anything to eat, they give you fucking a warm meal. We always be judged by people. Yo, is that his real home. hair, or is that like a us. wig or something? Because his hair is too home, nice. But all that money that they invested, not a single person, not a single <laughs> person has been given a home. They say, oh, we will send you, we will call you. How you don't want to call me? How you don't want to find me when I'm over here? You need to come over here and find me here. Nowhere else. Like, you don't see me. Why, why do you need to send me a mail? Come over here and find me and give me the house. How hard is that? So you feel that's like crazy. To get a home? Just come that, over here and see like, me and give know, me the they, house. They, they this Listen, people that's not on drugs can't even get that, bro. Cars, that's stuff. just not how it works. Buy, uh, you got to go seek themselves. out assistance. You know what I mean? Willingly homeless. Where do you find places to sleep at night? Anywhere. Even... Pike Market, right there at the picnic tables. I'll sleep there, you know. Yeah, man. I'm just walking through. Yeah, yeah. Very awesome. So a lot of these stores are closed. Yeah. Very some respectful. of these high rises are apartments that cost over three thousand dollars a month. Yeah, I want to know I mean, that dog's them, name. Like, if you were to buy them outright or <laughs> one point five, two million dollar apartments, you know. Basically, with opiate addiction, I hate myself and want to die. Why? Because they keep kicking us down, kicking us down. Kicking us down. It's not like in Vegas, like it's, it's hot, bro. You know what I'm saying? Most people underground and shit. Most people hiding. But out here, people don't give a fuck because a lot don't arrest you, bro. Don't come. This see guy you, looks like paranormal. Take your bubble, take your foil, throw it away. But in this thing, other states, you go to jail. Yeah, Ameri shit. African American yeah, version. Shit. It, it'd be crazy out here. Like, some people OD. Like somebody might be sleeping, you think. About all the time to be dead and shit. Nigga, every drug nowadays is laced with Fetty, Trank, or whatever, bro. It's like, you'd be surprised. You might think you're smoking weed and it's a minute. Gone. Like, Weed lace with Trank and fentanyl? Yeah, how would you describe Third and Pike? Dangerous. You gotta be right or you're gonna get hurt out there, you know what I mean? What keeps you, you know, staying out here every day? I'd have to say 100% my addiction. My addiction to fentanyl. I'm trying to get into to treatment again and it's just... At least like he's a, honest. Never <laughs> ending cycle. <laughs> How would you describe the difficulty of kicking a opioid addiction? Almost impossible. Almost, sometimes I, I think it's you know, it's impossible. You'll have you'll have months and months of sobriety, but then that 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 consciousness of relapsing will be on your conscious because you, you you hold yourself you you know you hold yourself up to that standard and you don't want to let yourself down. But I really want to quit. I'm, just, I'm tired of all this life. <laughs> what would you tell someone who's thinking about experimenting with opioids? 
don't do it. It's not worth it. I'll take it. I'll Lose take that. In your life I'll take that to heart, bro. Small percentage of us even make it out. This life is so exhausting that I'm living right now. It's like I don't even know if I'd be able to make it. I see a lot of people that appear to have spinal issues out here. Is oh, that from yeah, the did. fentanyl leaning? Oh yeah. Definitely. So they're just getting so hot that they're deteriorating their spinal cord? Well, that is just like lack of sleep and uh, just constantly standing up. And you might see this person who's sober, right? <laughs> Acting normal as shit, like the most smartest person all day long. Hit that fit one time. Turn into like a demon, a zombie or something. Bro, we all just out of the camera, Why man? he keep looking hey, at the man. bro with the, on the KC, man. laying slumped over hey, right hey. there? I leave, man. He hey, talking hey, about him. Like a butterfly, sting like a bee. What are some things that you think people might not know about <laughs> being homeless in general? <laughs> Jump jack. People don't believe that. People don't understand he that. He didn't know if, if he was going to get juggled with that needle. You can, go, you can get your shit together and, you know, be where you want to be. But people choose it because there's no rules. There's no <laughs> Bro, rules, said you no could be the calmest, no most smartest person ever. And then you so hit the that fentanyl one, one time. But then Instantly way, looked at bro that was slumped you know, over like on the cart. He turned to a demon. To find some type of job what you to mean? To my pension so that I can live comfortable when I get old instead of working until I'm 80, you know? Uh, you talking about him, ain't what you? What has brought you down to Third and Pike? Well, I do a lot of drugs. I smoke a lot of fentanyl. Fentanyl is obviously a pretty hardcore drug. Smoke what led you a lot of fentanyl. fentanyl use? I had cancer when I was a kid. Uh, I had cancer from age of like 13 to uh, somewhere like... 17 or 18. We went from like Dilaudid and morphine and shit like that to smoking pills. Kind of progressed into heroin because heroin was cheaper. And How long have you been addicted to opioids? Well, from 13 to 29. You do the math. And how would you describe the grips of addiction to someone who's never so been 13 to 29, to and he and got that from having cancer. You so you know what that means. Want to someone prescribed him the crap. Doing what I'm doing. You have to be in a pretty At 13. I go into a grocery store every night. I steal hundreds of dollars worth of groceries to sell them half price to people who are only willing to pay half price because they know they can get one leg up on me. I walk away with $40, which is enough to do drugs and maybe a soda or two. Where do you hope to be in like three years? Not dead. I guess to someone out there that is considering trying I mean, for the first time, what advice some. would you give them? What the fuck are you thinking? That's it. That's that's it. What the fuck are you thinking? It's stupid. It's the dumbest thing I've ever fucking heard. Mic drop. Opiates. Mic I mean, drop. I hope. Simple. Just don't have don't stay away from it, cuz. There's about the resources that are out there so <laughs> people can get off the streets and, and get some help. We're all just living a life, you know, life of struggle and addiction right now, but uh, hopefully we overcome this hump. And I want to make a shout out to my family and I uh, love you guys and hope to get back in everybody's life soon. If you had one wish, what would it be? I wish that I never did drugs. That long needs to go. God bless America. Hopefully people will start to actually care a little bit more. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate you. As always, the Extended Cult will be on Patreon. And is there anything else you want to say to the people out there? Um, just don't do fentanyl. Tell your loved ones that you love them because you don't know, you know. People die every day, man. You don't, you don't know when your time's going to be. They allow all these things and stuff. I'm not a conservative, y'all. I don't get into all that stuff. But this is the sneakiness I be saying about them, bro. They'll put all these stuff and allow these pharmaceutical companies to do all these crazy things and then have all y'all hooked on drugs. And, and then tell you fucking... I got some collard greens for you on election day. Come on, Sean. I know you want that. Get that. Get that. Top collard greens, y'all. I'm offended. I'm offended. I'll see y'all in the next one, man.